hello guys welcome to doctor science so today we are going to talk about the pathogenesis of mycobacterium tuberculosis in this uh, video i'll be explaining what are the uh, interleukins involved in this uh, uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis so let's start so suppose here is the mycobacterium tuberculosis bacteria so what happens when this mycobacterium tuberculosis bacteria enters in an individual okay so this individual is getting infected by the mycobacterium tuberculosis in his lungs so here here are his lungs in his lungs this bacteria will enter into alveolar macrophages so here are the alveolar macrophages okay so what does this alveolar macrophages do they will eat up this bacteria present here okay so what is happening in the alveolar macrophages suppose this is the alveolar macrophages and here is the bacteria this bacteria enters into the alveolar macrophages right So here you are the alveolar macrophages. So how how does this happen? So as you can see from here, first there is this membrane. You can see this membrane, right? This membrane invaginates. It means it goes inside. And here is the bacteria here. And eventually this uh, membrane will form into a vesicle. And it and it engulfs this bacteria now this compound is called as a phagosome okay eventually this phagosome fuses with the lysosome here is a lysosome okay what does this lysosome consist of this lysosome consists of a react reactive oxygen species which are which are very toxic for the bacteria which can kill the bacteria okay so when the phagosome this phagosome as you can see this phagosome fuses with this lysosome as you can see uh, this is the phagosome and this phagosome is containing the bacteria and uh, you can see here it is getting fused with the lysosomes okay and this lysosome is con consists of reactive oxygen species right so the newly formed compound is called as phago lysosome okay phago plus lysosome that which is called as phago lysosome okay so this is this this is the normal function of the macrophages but what happens in tuberculosis this is in tuberculosis mycobacterium tuberculosis this mechanism is interrupted so there is no phago lysosome maturation okay so suppose here is the person and he is getting infected by the mycobacterium tuberculosis what will happen the earliest feature is macrophages are activated right the in the earliest earliest means less than 3 weeks in the earliest the macrophages are activated and there is defective phagolysosome maturation okay now after greater than 3 weeks what will happen so here is your alveolar macrophages let me draw it clearly here are your alveolar macrophages and they have toll like receptors too okay they are a part of innate immunity please watch my videos to understand what are toll like receptors and these toll like receptors when they are activated 
they release a compound called as interleukin 12 okay this is very important because this interleukin 12 what they will do they will activate t helper 1 cells this is very very important okay because if there is no presence of interleukin 12 they cannot activate t helper 1 cells and there will be no activation of further uh, changes and there is no mycobacterium killing okay and this is happening after three weeks okay so as you can see here here are the alveolar macrophages and this alveolar macrophages have tall like receptors which are releasing interleukin 12 and in turn they will activate t helper 1 cells so and not only that this alveolar macrophages they contain mhc class 2 receptors as you know from my innate and adaptive immunity playlist mhc class 2 receptors will activate t helper 1 cd4 positive t helper 1 cells right and once this activation takes place this t helper 1 cells will be releasing as you can see they will be releasing very important compound called as yes interferon gamma and this interferon gamma one of the main function is conversion of macrophages into super activated macrophages I will explain what is meant by this super activated means it's these macrophages are like superman okay they contain special enzymes present in it so what are super activated macrophages as you can see this is the macrophages and you can say that this macrophage is engulfing the bacteria mycobacterium tuberculosis and eventually it is forming the phagosome right and eventually this phagosome fuses with the lysosome but this is not happening in the less than three weeks phase right or the earliest phase but once the gamma interferon is released this fusion is possible it means there is maturation of the phago lysosome complex okay there are mainly th three uh, important lines you have to know what is the gamma interferon doing one it is doing the maturation of phago lysosome and not only that they will activate nitric oxide okay they will activate nitric oxide synthetase which will eventually form nitric oxide nitric oxide when fused with an oxidant they will form very toxic metabolo metabolites which are called as uh, nitric oxide uh, species okay which are very toxic and this will eventually kill the bacteria after that what will happen they will uh, they are not not only no nitric oxide uh, NOS is produced there are there is also production of reactive oxygen species which will also kill the toxic which which is also toxic for the mycobacterium tuberculosis so these are the three phases you have to know and after that eventually what will happen as you know these are the macrophages here these are the super activated macrophages these super activated macrophages will be releasing tumor necrotic factor okay why they are releasing tumor necrotic factor because tumor necrotic factor as you learned from the immunology playlist tumor necrotic factor is a yeah monocyte recruitment it helps in monocyte 
recruitment okay this is very important because in rheumatoid arthritis we are giving tumor necrotic factor antagonists so these people are at increased risk for mycobacterium tuberculosis okay okay so not only that you, as you can see this super activated macrophages eventually get converted into epithelioid wait a second epithelioid histiocytes okay uh, these epithelioid histiocytes as you can see these epithelioid histocytes they will form a group they will eventually get fused okay this epithelioid histiocyte eventually get fused and these fused epithelioid histocytes are called as giant cells so once again what is happening we will know as you can see the super activated macrophages eventually get as there is gamma interferon this gamma interferon eventually helps in the maturation of super activated macrophages into epithelioid histocytes and eventually these epithelioid histocytes will fuse with each other and they form giant cells because in tb you will be seeing caseous granuloma surrounded by t cells right so that was about the pathogenesis of tuberculosis before ending the topic i will just show you the picture here taken from the pathology textbook so as you can see this is a mac mycobacterium and mac uh, mycobacterium they get inside the macrophages by manos binding lectin receptors and cr3 complement receptor 3 okay i forgot to mention it but uh, they so here i will explain it here so here are the macrophages macrophages not only have toll like receptors toll like receptors too they also have receptors such as manos binding lectin receptors and complement receptor 2 receptors and they all get activated by the mycobacterium tuberculosis complex okay so uh, as you can see the in less than three weeks phase which is the earliest phase these are the alveolar macrophages and they are getting activated as you can see the alveolar macrophages are getting activated and you can see there is phagosomal ma manipulation what you, what is meant by maturation arrest it is the phagosome lysosome fusion is getting arrested and there is la lack of acid ph when li li lysosome has this acidic ph okay which is important to kill the bacteria so there is lack of acidic ph and there is ineffective phagolysosome formation and what happens there is unchecked ba bacillary proliferation as you can see the f this is the phagosome right in the in the macrophages this phagosome will be holding a lot of mycobacterium tuberculosis where there is a lot of proliferation it means they will start reproducing in the phagosome of the alveolar macrophages that is in less than three feet three weeks after greater than three weeks what will happen these alveolar macrophages by toll like receptors to release interleukin 12 which will which will activate the t helper one cells right and t helper one cells what will they release they release gamma interferon which will convert the macrophage macrophages into super activated macrophages and once they are getting super activated macrophages what will happen 
the phagosome will fuse with the li lysosome which is called as phagolysosome maturation and not only that this these are the three important steps when gamma interferon is produced the first step is the phagolysosomal maturation the second step is the nitric oxide as i told you nitric oxide when fused with with oxidants it will produce toxic substance which is nitric or uh, nos okay and not only that they will produce reactive oxygen species which are very toxic to the mycobacterium tuberculosis and eventually tumor necrotic factor is produced okay why is this tumor ne necrotic factor is produced it is help it helps in the monocytic treatment okay uh, in the presence of gamma interferon if there is chronic gamma interferon in the in your cells what will happen yes the super activated macrophages get gets converted into epithelial histiocytes which will eventually form giant cells okay eventually they will fuse and form giant cells as you can see there is caseous necrosis so here this thing is called as caseous necrosis because there is like cheese cheese like things and these are called the giant cells the epithelial or the giant cells okay so that was about the pathogenesis of mycobacterium tuberculosis thank you